Hello everybody. Welcome to this TDD series about multi-tenant architecture for software application and how to ensure security for them. In this series, we will discuss the multi-tenant architecture and its model types, followed by how to use Okta to achieve secure connections between and among applications. We will also talk about some key security concepts and terminology you will need to know in order to effectively leverage Okta. This two-part series is split into two videos. In the second video, we will talk about technical considerations of Okta and how to configure it. In this video, we will talk about software multi-tenancy, which will serve as the foundation of effectively using Okta. The inspiration of this video is a real case study. One of our clients, a US headquarter company offering an AI platform to grow web traffic, wanted QLogic to help with managing user onboarding, authentication, and authorization of tenant users. They also wanted help with implementing single sign-on and multi-factor authentication. The first problem, however, was segregating user data in a multi-tenant software architecture. So before moving ahead, let's understand the concept of multi-tenant software architecture. Multi-tenant software architecture is also called software multi-tenancy. Here, a single instance of a software application and its underlying database and hardware serves multiple tenants. A tenant can be an individual user. Usually, However, it's a group of users, such as a customer organization, that shares common access to and privileges within the application instance. Each tenant's data is isolated from and invisible to the other tenants sharing the application instance. This ensures data security and privacy for all tenants. Tenants may be allowed to customize some parts of the application, such as the UI or business rules, but they cannot customize the application's code. In a multi-tenant architecture, multiple instances of an application operate in a shared environment. This architecture works because each tenant is integrated physically but is logically separated. This means that a single instance of the software will run on one server and then serve multiple tenants. In this way, a software application in a multi-tenant architecture can share a dedicated instance of configurations, data, user management, and other properties. Multi-tenancy application can share the same users, displays, and rules although users can customize this to an extent. They also share database schemas, which tenants can customize. Now let's take a look at why multi-tenant architecture is important in today's tech economy. First, multi-tenancy is important for the scalability of public and private clouds. This has made multi-tenancy a standard. Secondly, due to reduced overheads, the multi-tenant architecture can aid in providing a better return on investment for organizations. Finally, the multi-tenant architecture quickens the pace of maintenance and updates for tenants. There are three main multi-tenancy model types. These have varying levels of complexity and cost. First, a single shared database schema is a multi-tenancy model with a multi-tenant database. This is the simplest form out of the three. It is relatively low cost for tenants because of the use of shared resources. This form uses a single application and database instance to host tenants and store data. Using a single shared database schema allows for use easier scaling. However, operational cost can be comparatively higher. The second multi-tenant architecture uses a single database with multiple schemas. This tenant system uses a single application instance with individual database for each tenant. This architecture has a higher cost with more overheads for each database. It is a valuable architecture when data from different tenants needs to be treated differently. For example, if they had to go through different geographic regulations. The third type of multi-tenant architecture hosts data in multiple databases. This model is relatively complex in terms of management and maintenance, but tenants can be separated by a chosen criteria. There are a number of advantages that our client was able to derive, leveraging a multi-tenant architecture. First, it is less expensive when compared to other tenant hosting architectures, so they were able to reduce costs significantly. Multi-tenancy offers a pay-for-what-you-need pricing model. Therefore, it fitted perfectly as they scaled. Tenants didn't have to worry about updates since these updates are pushed out by the host provider. The client only had to monitor and administer a single system. The architecture is now easily scalable. Tenants also reduce operation cost by sharing database, application, and infrastructure. Development and deployment costs were reduced if we were to compare them to single tenant applications. Tenants quickly and securely add new customers by automating the customer sign-up process. Finally, the overheads of maintaining multiple versions of an application were also significantly reduced. Now a huge consideration is about security. After all, you share infrastructure and resources with many other client applications. 
Okta is a tool that can be leveraged for securing multi-tenant architectures. It provides security solutions and manages connectivity to your workforce and applications. So, coming back to our client, we used Okta to ensure proper segregation among tenant user data. Sometimes an organization finds that it is faced with diverse set of user types. In such cases, you can consider the Okta tenant segregation model. This model separates each Okta tenant with its own data, network performance and feature set, making each tenant its own entity. It also adds an additional layer of security to your infrastructure. With our client, we ensure data segregation by adding separate Okta groups for each tenant and adding its user to that specific group. Using the Okta groups, we were able to authorize and grant limited access to the user based on the group. The groups also made it possible to have different group-wise sign-in policies. In a related vein, our client also wanted our help with implementing SSO for two web portals. To do this, we created two separate Okta applications for each web portal. When both of these Okta apps are assigned to a user and he logs into one of them on a browser, Okta creates a session which allows the user to access the other application as well. Okta uses ID and access tokens for session management. These tokens have authorization and some additional user information stored in JWT format. So when a user signs in either to Okta or to any Okta apps assigned to it, the ID and access token enables the SSO for the other Okta apps of the user. Apart from the login credentials, our client also wanted to add an additional layer of security at the authentication for its users. They wanted us to help them implement MFA. To do this, we use the sign-in policy of Okta. Using this, we enabled MFA based on the geolocation, time, login frequency, Okta group and other user attributes. Users got the password, which is a second layer of authentication on the Android or iOS app called Okta Verify. We preferred this model because while onboarding the users to Okta, mobile numbers were not mandatory. So sending an OTP to the user's mobile in addition to their login credential was not an option. The MFA could be optionally enabled for the user using the sign-in policy. A related problem that the client wanted help with was integrating SSO on their web portal with the existing Okta users of one of their clients. We created an identity provider in Okta and configured it using SAML algorithm. Some configuration at the end client's Okta instance were also required. Because of this, the existing client users at Okta were able to process their web portal like any other Okta app assigned to them. And finally, our client wanted to build more personalization into their product. This included white labeling, implementing customized notification and using third-party cookies of Okta. We ensured that the client's web app UI was aligned with their desired branding, customize the template of email notification with the client's logo and successfully set session cookies with the client's subdomain. Before we move on, it's important to understand that retaining a single platform gives you deployment agility and standardization. This ultimately increases the cohesion and revenue. The Okta tenant segregation model and its set of choices provides the benefits of a single platform. At the same time, it internally and externally secures your user's data. So whether you are creating an infrastructure for your employees and customers, employees and partners, or a large per customer architecture, Okta will be able to handle your scenario. So to summarize, if we observe key features of Okta with multi-tenancy model are single sign-on, adapt to MFA, universal directory, life cycle management, API access management, authorization, authentication, user management, B2B integration, workflows, identity engine, devices, directories, integrations, and many more. So that brings us to the end of this video. We discussed the multi-tenant architecture, its model types, as well as how Okta can be used in this ecosystem. In the next video, we will discuss the Okta data model in detail. We will give you more information about how Okta works and the technical considerations you would need to keep in mind while using Okta. If you have any questions in the meantime, please comment below or reach out to us at info at Thanks for watching and if you have found this video useful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel to be immediately notified of additional interesting content. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the part 2 of the series.